I am big is about sharing what's working in a big way. Our guest today strongly believes in connecting with and learning from the elderly. He takes care of his grandmother, Ruth Cope, who's dealing with Alzheimer's. Let us welcome Zain to the I Am Big Show. Good morning, Zain. How are you today? I'm doing great, Ayush. Welcome to the I Am Big Show. Lovely to have you. Oh, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Good morning, it. everyone watching today. Coffee is our drink. Early in the morning. Cheers for Absolutely. coffee. Why coffee, Zain? Um, oh, that's good coffee. Now it's morning time, and why not? <laughs> yeah. I know you work really hard. Does coffee help? Uh, yeah, I use coffee. You're a pharmacist, yeah. right? Yes, I'm a That's pharmacist, good. so uh, just uh, getting going in the morning, get the blood going, wake up. That's great. You know, I've, I've always been amazed with how loyal and how hardworking and what a wonderful person you are. Really excited to have you on our show today. I appreciate it. Happy um, to be here. The, thank you. The... Um, <clears throat> there's a lot of things and a lot of qualities I really admire about you. Mm -hmm. But there is something which I think, including myself and a lot of people, really admire about you is how close you are to your grandmother. And, and I think that for every viewer watching, it will be very amazing for us to hear today is what's the impact your grandmother had in your life and, 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 and I know that she lives with you today. Mm -hmm. So we really want to talk about that. So tell us about your grandmother. Okay. Um, well, my grandmother is, uh, um, she lives with us. Uh, she came up from uh, Kansas where she was living. And, uh, and when we found out that uh, she was starting to have um, a decline with her uh, medical term cognitive abilities, uh, basically um, she was suffering from memory loss and she wasn't able to take care of herself anymore. So we moved her from Kansas up to where we live in Orland Park. And uh, she's been living with us for probably four years now. Mm -hmm. And we just uh, keep her and uh, help her get through the day. Uh, she's, uh, she suffers from um, Alzheimer's, but uh, she's essentially able to still do basic uh, caring of herself. So she can eat, she can you know, dress herself, all those kind of things. Mm -hmm. Tell us about your childhood uh, and what you remember about your childhood, uh, especially in reference to uh, your interaction with your grandmother. Uh, my grandmother in my childhood actually was very, uh, uh, she was uh, always a good source of humor. She was always very funny. Um, uh, one memory that sticks out is she used to read a lot of uh, books to me when I was a kid. So when she's reading a book, if there's a dull part in it, if there's something that's she, she could see that I'm not uh, this this boring me or something like that. She would uh, interject with her own humor. So I mean, it, she would say something like, I, she, I mean, she was funny, so she used to cuss a lot. So I mean, uh, if she was like, <laughs> if she was telling a story or You're something, funny too, you know. yeah, she would have uh, she would have like the character. It's a children's book, and she would have him like say some obscenity or something. It would just bust me up. So she used to do stuff like that all the time. And uh, it was, it's funny because even though she has Alzheimer's, even now she still has a good sense of humor. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if you're just talking to her and uh, if she's having a good time and she's just joking around, you really can't tell until you start getting into subjects of memory, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And grandmother's name is? Oh, uh, my grandma's name is Ruth. And she's, you said, from Kansas originally? Yeah, she's from Kansas originally. That's great. And um, so now that she lives with you, um, mm -hmm. how is that experience? Um, it's, it's a good experience. I mean, uh, we have the room, uh, so she's able to, uh, I mean, she has her own room, so that's comfortable for her. And we've, uh, we did have to make, when we were moving her into the house, we actually knew about it before we purchased our house. Um, we made sure that the house that we were going to purchase um, didn't have a lot of stairs that she would have to deal with because, uh, you know, she's got limited mobility. She's still walking, but I mean, you can't expect her to climb up and down a flight of stairs all day. 
what made you decide that was there one thing or a combination of things to say, okay, we want to take down Miami? Uh, it wasn't really a, I mean, it was a good situation for us because uh, we knew we would be able to um, accommodate her. Um, my uh, wife, who is uh, very supportive um, of you, the Nyla. entire situation, yeah, my wife Nyla, she uh, was willing to actually help take care of my grandmother. I mean, I really couldn't do a lot of the things that uh, are required to take care of a person in that situation mm -hmm. without her help. Mm -hmm. So um, having her around to do things that involve, like, you know, making sure that uh, she gets uh, showered properly in the morning, you know, she puts on her clothes. My grandmother, um, she suffers from a late stage Alzheimer's at this point. So uh, without a lot of uh, assistance, basic functions, she wouldn't be able to completely do them by herself. So, yeah. And you guys are there for her. Yeah. How do you feel about that? It feels good to be able to help her out. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if, uh, I'm, I'm sure that if other people had the same, uh, you know, wherewithal to help her out, they would probably do it too. Uh, it happens to be us, so we're happy to do it. Mm -hmm. Do you think that you're doing her a favor? Um, it doesn't feel that way. I mean, it's obvious that she needs help, and uh, that was what was nice about being able to move her in. But, I mean, um, she's always been uh, a positive influence on my life. She's always been uh, fun to hang around with, so bringing her into the house for me never seemed like that big a deal. It seemed like it was going to be a good addition to our family, so I was always happy to do it. And, you know, she's been that way. She's been a lot of fun to hang around with. I mean, we sit around and watch TV at night sometimes and just talk and she's fun to hang out with. Mm -hmm. I'm sure it comes with its own challenges. Um, what are the challenges that uh, you and your wife uh, have to kind of on a daily basis uh, kind of deal with? Uh, well, one thing that I think is characteristic of people with Alzheimer's disease um, that you probably have to be prepared to encounter is that at some point they may forget, well, they will forget their surroundings. They'll probably forget um, a lot of the people around them. And they may even forget you. Um, so if you're uh, dealing with that, it goes to extremes of even paranoia. So um, th they don't have a, a solid sense of reality. They may think people are after them. And if uh, one of those people happens to be close to you, um, then that's something that uh, you, know, you wind up having to deal with. And it, there's really no way of turning around the person who has Alzheimer's disease to get them to understand that you know, everything's okay. You know, these are all the people that should be here and nobody's out to get you. you know, nobody's trying to you know, steal your house or your, uh, you know, whatever the case may be or whatever they may think. And, uh, but for people who, um, encounter that, it might be difficult to deal with. My grandma and, uh, um, and my relationship with my grandma has always been that she's, she and I have always gotten along and she's never really had those delusions about me yet. Yeah, she does need somebody there with her all the time. And it's not a burden for you? No, it's, I wouldn't look at it as a burden. That's, I mean, that's great. Yeah. I mean, if you had a child and, uh, I mean, she's not a child, I give her the full respect of an adult, but I mean, she's, in terms of being able to take care of herself, she has the same limitations as a child. You would never think that, that of that with child, you know. Um, you know, I think that it, it's, 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 it's really nice that, you know, grandma's with you. Um, but even for any of our viewers watching today, I think, I think what I take from this experience is that we got to take care of our, elder, our elderly in some shape or form. We just can't ignore them. Sure. And, and you obviously have taken a... a stand of bringing grandmother in and and and, and kind of um you know being a huge part of her life right but there are different ways of doing that by by you know they are in an assisted living scenario or they are in a different situation living situation to still go visit do things connect with them make them part of your life mm. um what would you like to share with our viewers today about that um, well, I mean, I think, uh, w well, one thing I'll say about people who suffer with Alzheimer's disease is uh, one thing that you want to keep in mind um, is it's an irreversible process. So 
there's dementia, which anyone who lives long enough may be lucky enough to encounter. It's basically your brain dying. And that a lot what goes along with that is uh, you know memory loss and that kind of thing. Um, basic uh, old age memory loss that you would expect anyone to encounter. Um, Alzheimer's is a very specific disease and um, it has to do with uh, plaques that form in the brain. So there's an actual uh, process, a biochemical process that occurs uh, that makes that a disease. And for people who suffer from Alzheimer's disease, there's not a lot of treatment. Um, the treatment options don't stop the disease. Uh, uh, that what they can do is improve the person's cognitive ability, ability to think and do things, um, and it can help to slow down the uh, progress of the disease, but it can't stop it. It can't reverse anything that's been done. So since there's really no um, medicine that's available to um, really do that much, all of the support and treatment comes from people who are willing to help. So, uh, and in addition to that, into um, treatment and into research into the disease so that you can learn more about it, uh, we can learn more about it and then learn uh, better ways of treating it. Old, older people in particular, um, in certain situations, probably need more help than most people are aware of. And uh, usually if you're able to do anything to help out, um, you usually would expect people's families to be able to provide some sort of help, but some people don't have um, very strong family structures, so you, you would expect other people to be able to help out, yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you think it's cultural uh, a little bit? Um, I don't know. I, I see a lot of people who take care of uh, their older family members in, uh, in you know, all different areas, so I don't necessarily think it's cultural. Uh, I think here it's easy to get busy. Um, in, no, in the United know. States, yeah. yeah. I, I think it's easy to get busy and forget about a lot of things. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that seems to fall by the wayside, I think, is uh, care for fa certain family members and certainly um, older family members because if there's more generational gaps, um, people may not uh, be as familiar with them in the family and they may actually uh, be able to, I don't know, forget about them more often. Are you happy with the decision you made to take grandmother in and, and, and is this something which is really enriching your life? Or are you doing it because it's your duty and you gotta do it? Uh, probably a little bit of everything. I mean, I don't know how much, um, I, I, I did it for, I think the reason that uh, I thought it'd be fun to have my grandmother living with us and I, I thought that we were a good place for her to come. So, um, and I, I haven't regretted it and it's been a lot of fun having my grandmother around, so. I know that you are getting involved with the uh, Alzheimer's Association. Yes. Uh, what's your association with the Alzheimer's Association? Uh, well, I, I've created a, a, a tribute page for my grandmother, uh, the Ruth Croak uh, Tribute Fund, actually. And uh, what it allows people to do is to um, provide donations to the Alzheimer's Association. Um, in my uh, in the name of my grandmother, um, really, if you go to alz.org, you can uh, make a donation uh, to the Alzheimer's Association uh, just through that website, and that's excellent. They uh, provide a lot of great um, on the website itself. They provide a lot of great educational tools, uh, a lot of links to um, you know areas of support for people who suffer from Alzheimer's throughout the country, and they also um, are involved in research and the development of ways to treat the disease. So it's a, it's a really great association because they, they cover a lot of different areas and um, for, for a nonprofit organization, I think 70% of everything that's donated to them actually goes to you know, uh, the actual research and the programs that they uh, support. That's great. Um, everybody, alz.org on our site, iambigshow.com, we will post a direct link to Zen's uh, amazing grandmother, Ruth Ko, and her tribute page so you can learn more about her. I've had the privilege to meet her. And I think that, you know, the learning for me in, in, in listening to you is that it's extremely important to connect and take care of our elderly. And whether in your situation, because you have the means and you do have the desire and you have been able to take grandmother in, that's awesome. But to our viewers watching today, um, there is many different ways you can take care of your elderly. 
you're not necess you don't necessarily have to take them in. If you can, that's great. But they might have different challenges. They might have different needs. But if as long as you can connect, whether it's through a phone call, through a letter, by a visit, and acknowledge their life and let them know that they matter and that they are the reason today that you are in this world, I think it will make them happy. And trust me, it will give you a lot back. That's what the elderly means to, to me and taking care of them. And I always, I, I've always felt this growing up too, that what if one day my parents had decided that, oh, we were not going to take care of you. So it's a oh. cycle which needs to go on. Uh, and, and let's do our best to love and acknowledge our elderly. And I uh, love you and stay tuned. Give a laugh. <laughs> <laughs>